following program is a production of the Fairfax Network, Fairfax County Public Schools, funded in part by the Virginia Satellite Educational Network. Welcome to Meet the Author. My name is Della Kidd, and I'm here at the MTA studio. Joining us today is the sister team of Francis and Ginger Park. They'll be sharing their ideas about the writing process, talking about their books, and later on in the show, you'll learn something quite unique about them. Some of their children's book titles include The Royal Bee, My Freedom Trip, A Child's Escape from North Korea, Have a Good Day Cafe, and more. Their novel, To Swim Across the World, is about their parents' amazing journey from Korea to America and a tribute to their Korean heritage. Frances, Ginger, it is wonderful to have you here today. It's great Thanks to be for here. having Thanks. us. We're delighted. Oh, I can't wait to talk to you. Well, we have a great show planned for today. This is a live presentation, and in just a few minutes, we're going to open up our phone lines to welcome your questions. Our number nationally is 1-800-231-6359. If you're calling us locally, you may reach us at 703-978-1636. Francis and Ginger, it is so great to have you here, and it's wonderful to have local authors on the show for us to be able to talk to. I've enjoyed reading your books, and I know that, that you have a wide variety of stories. There may be some stories that some of our viewers haven't uh, read yet, so tell us a little bit about yourselves. Well, I'm Ginger. Mm -hmm. I'm Frances. And uh, we write together. We do. <laughs> Our parents were born in Korea and came here, I think, in what was known as the second wave of Korean immigrants in the 50s. I was born in Boston, and Ginger was born in Washington, D.C. And we love to write many stories about our heritage. So the stories are based on family experiences? Yes. Oh. A lot of them are. I mm -hmm. mean, books or ideas, they come from uh, your own family history or your personal experience or sometimes out of the clear blue sky. Well, the, the first book I'd like to talk to you about that, that I do know is based on family experiences is called The Royal Bee. Mm. Um, who in your family is this book mainly based on? It's based on our grandfather and here he is mm -hmm. in a picture. Um, he grew up in the late 19th century mm -hmm. when the class system ruled basically that the wealthy children went to school and the poorer children, as our grandfather, mm -hmm. did not get an education. And so he wanted to learn, so he sat outside of a school called a Sodan school, mm -hmm. and he listened to all the lessons through a thin rice paper door. And he did that throughout the seasons, and in fact, um, he didn't even own a pair of shoes. So come winter, he would still be out there, and his feet froze to the point that even when he was an older man, he had calluses that were an inch thick on his soles of his feet. But this is a boy who wanted to learn so desperately that he was willing to stand outside even during bad weather that we all come inside and, and, and get bundled up for. Absolutely. Mm. Until one day, the master led him into the classroom and then he became the honor student. That's such a, an inspiring story. Could you tell us what a royal bee is? Well, the so, royal bee was the contest mm -hmm. that he competed in, but in order for him to do that, he had to go through years of schooling, mm -hmm. and I believe he was probably about 12 when he won that competition. Is it like a spelling bee? It's more like a National Geographic mm -hmm. type bee where they ask you um, all sorts of questions, a lot of history. Mm -hmm. And one mm -hmm. student from each school, or actually kind of like from each district right. mm -hmm. or province, was invited to go to the governor's palace to compete in this competition, and it happened to be our grandfather. <laughs> and his winning answer was, like in the book, a poem. And it was a he was, good. yeah, they, they asked him, the, it was between him and another boy, and they both had to, like, compose a poem on the spot. Which was yeah. interesting because they went for hours competing mm -hmm. and they couldn't decide who was going to be the winner so what they decided the judges said let's make them both write a poem yeah. and the other boy couldn't write a poem so it's 
very, poetry is very important. <laughs> right. It's very important, and it, the message that he he gave in the in the poem was just as important as well. That's right. Yes. Well, okay. over at Colin Powell Elementary School in Centerville, Virginia, <laughs> and Drew's third grade class, they've been reading several of your books, <laughs> and they had some questions for you. So let's find out what questions they had about the book, The Royal Bee. Why is Sang Ho lying to his mother? How could Sang Ho be more smarter than the other class if he started school later? Why did Sang Ho represent the class? Why did Sang Ho have to wear a cool dress to the royal bee? Those third graders have some great questions. Let's <laughs> begin do. with the first. Uh, why does Sang Ho lie to his mother? Well, I think it was more we decided that she didn't w we he didn't want her to know until it was a definite thing that he was going to go to school and and he didn't want her to get get her hopes up so she would be working out toiling in the fields and and thinking about him you know trying to get into school because she knew that that was that was something that really wasn't supposed to happen during that time period he didn't want her to worry about him it sounds like he was very protective of his mom. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. This question had me wondering as well, how could Song Ho be so, so much smarter than the others when he started school so much later? Well, again, I think it comes down to the fact that his desire to learn mm -hmm. was so strong. Perseverance. Mm -hmm. If you're curious about the world and you want to learn and, and when you're deprived of something, your hunger mm -hmm. for knowledge is so much stronger. And that's how it was with our grandfather and in fact what it was is that he sat outside for many seasons listening to the lessons and when the teacher actually let him in to the mm -hmm. school all the different students questioned him asked him questions mm -hmm. well what ha what have you learned by sitting outside See the door if he was worthy that's right and you've pretty much answered the third question that was asked which was why did Songho represent the class well, he was mm -hmm. he was chosen by yes. his classmates. And he was very well respected as well as he had learned so much. Absolutely. And like in the book, mm -hmm. uh, his um, he was awarded, you know, the cow mm -hmm. and the gold coins around the neck, mm -hmm. which afforded his family to buy land. And that was his family's, and this is the real story, mm -hmm. uh, ascent. Mm -hmm. The final question our third graders asked was, why does Sung Ho wear a cool dress to the royal bee? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> well, because you have to dress up to participate mm -hmm. in the royal bee, and fortunately for him, his classmates who were considered of the young bond status or the higher mm -hmm. class mm -hmm. um, actually paid for the entire dress that he was wearing, which is called uh, a humbuck and a chogori, which is the little jacket, because naturally he couldn't afford it right. himself, mm -hmm. and he didn't tell his mother, and even if he did, she couldn't afford it either, mm -hmm. so. And, and styles were just different back then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he had the, the long ponytail, right. and our uh, artist was Chinese, and he had drawn him at first in, you know, in the earlier mm -hmm. versions of the book with just the regular hair. With the short hair. Yeah, and we said, no, 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 in those days in Korea, mm -hmm. if you were a young male, you were not married yet, you had to you wear had the ponytail. You had to wear the braid. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the pictures are authentic. Absolutely. Let's move on to your next book, My Freedom Trip, A Child's mm -hmm. Escape from North Korea. Now, right here on our set, we, ha we do have some beautiful set design based Absolutely. on pictures taken straight from this book. I understand the story was based on your mother's childhood. Tell us about that, and what kind of research did you do for the story? Well, my freedom trip was inspired by our mother's true flight from North Korea. That's a picture Korea, of your mom. Right. She's Korea. right next to Song Ho, who we That's talked right. about in the Royal Bee. That's Bay. right. Mm -hmm. That's Song That's Ho as a, a grandfather at that mm -hmm. time. That's our mom at 10. Okay. This picture was taken in 1940. And this was actually her brother, mm -hmm. um, who she lost in, the, in World War II. Um, the country was divided, mm -hmm. or it was going through a division. After World War II, they really didn't have a government, and so Russia came in from the north, the United States came in from the south, and they decided the way to solve this for now is let's divide the country by a line called the 38th parallel. And our mother happened to be in the north where the Russians were, mm -hmm. and 
she had to take flight to South Korea, which was called the Freedom Land. And the story, um, unfortunately, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't mention our grandmother. This is our grandmother. Mm -hmm. She is um, actually in the story as well. In the end, she, our mother did make it to South Korea, mm -hmm. but there were consequences. She lost her mother. Her mother never made it across the border. Well, let's go back to our third graders from Colin Powell Elementary because they had s some additional questions for My Freedom Trip. Why did they separate North and South Korea? Why did the soldier let Sue go? How did Sue feel when her mother was still in North Korea? What happened to the mother? I heard that you have a chocolate store and I was wondering how much pounds do you sell of chocolate each day? So these students did their reading. They have some more good questions for you. I, I, could you give us a little bit more detail of why they separated North and South Korea? That was the first question. Um, well, again, because the country was an orphaned country mm -hmm. after World War II, and I think that the children will have to have a few history lessons to understand what that means, but Korea was um, occupied by the Japanese before the war. And when, th when the Japanese lost World War II, Korea didn't have a government, and so the country was divided by the two power mm -hmm. house governments, the United States and Russia at the time, and our mother was in Russia or, you know, North right. Korea. Okay. And we're she looking at a to. map of North and South Korea as well. That's right. And if you see that, mm -hmm. that thick line right. right down the middle of the peninsula there, that is called the 38th parallel. And, and that's, that's the line your mom had to cross. Absolutely. Right. Well, we're going to stop there for a moment because we have a call. This is from Ben from Flint Hill Elementary. <laughs> Hi, Ben. What's your question? Hi. Do you, all, do you two always write with each other and do you always agree with the other person? Good question. Uh, we no. we actually <laughs> we actually no and no. I didn't hear the second part of that question. Do you always uh, agree? Do oh, you always, always write agree. With each other? Um, we actually write separately as well, Ben. Um, uh, primarily novels, which we work on our own, but we always come together to write the picture books. Uh, we haven't argued about anything yet. Um, what happens is, as one of us comes up with an idea and sort of drafts it out and it goes back and forth between us and if, if we disagree about a point or a line or just want to cross it, we just do that and hand it back to the other person without saying anything. All right, so Francis, you might be a drafter or Ginger, you might be a drafter exactly. and then the other person takes the other role. Right. Just goes and back and forth. What makes it so interesting yeah. because every project is different mm -hmm. because sometimes you're the one that comes up with the idea mm -hmm. or you know sometimes she comes up with the idea and the other person runs with it. Mm -hmm. So it is. Every project is different. Mm -hmm. How about that? Well, the next question is, thank you, Ben, for calling. Uh, the next question is, why did the soldier let Sue go? This was the second question from our third graders. Uh, in, you know, in w when you think about war, you think about all the bad things, mm -hmm. but there's always humanity. If you were to take this person and this person and this person, you would see that they were, you know, really all the same. And we wanted to show um, just one, you know, light right there where if a person like the soldier had to make the decision of, you know, can I let this child go or do I, you know, make her go back to where she doesn't want to go, he decided to be human. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she was a little girl. And, and she was a yeah. little girl. And in fact, in, in the real story, our mother was jailed three times mm -hmm. before she actually made it across the border. And it was much more harrowing than the way we portray it in the book. And in my freedom trip, because it's first person, which is something I'm sure a lot of the third graders are studying right now, how you write, whether it's first person or third person, mm -hmm. in first person, it's very important 
that you write it in such a way that the reader will slip into the main character's shoes. And in this particular book, My Freedom Trip, mm -hmm. the child is actually going on the journey and feel with feel those Sue. emotions right mm -hmm. along with feels that Feels everything. Uh, the feel emotions every step. of love, mm -hmm. loss, tragedy, right. mm -hmm. um, yearning for both of her parents because one was in the South, mm -hmm. one was in the North, and well, feeling torn. Well, speaking of those emotions, the third question was, how did Sue feel when her mother was still in North Korea? That was, that was very, it was, you know what it was? It was a very slow, wrenching realization that she was never going to see her mom again. Yeah. Because right. when, she, when she first crossed over, she really thought her mother was following behind mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. few months. But when a few months passed, maybe in a year, when and a year passed... Came. Well, for a long time, later. they were, yeah, they were able to uh, write letters to each other. Oh, they were so, able to communicate. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people really believe that, you know, freedom was right around the corner. Unification was, you know, right around the corner. Um, and, in fact, our parents moved to the United States in 1954, so that would have been, what, seven years later? Mm -hmm. She still had hope. She still had hope, and by then she was, you know, a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, she, you know, as the years passed, that hope faded. Well, one of the other questions was, what happened to the mother? Uh, we don't do we really know, know for sure. Mm -hmm. We did hear um, little bits and pieces. In fact, actually in the late 90s, mm -hmm. um, one of our mother's relatives came to this country. He's a minister, and he somehow got a hold of a picture of our mm -hmm. grandmother on her was 60th. It her 60th birthday. That's the big birthday in Big Korea. celebration mm -hmm. in Korea. The first birthday and the 60th. And um, we did hear that she went blind. Mm -hmm. But she, she did actually, live. That's she lived, but it wasn't a very good yeah. life like our mothers. <laughs> well, we need to stop there because we have Victoria from Bailey's Elementary calling for a, with a question. Hi, Victoria. Hi. What is your question today? How did you learn about your Korean heritage? How did you learn about your Korean heritage? That's a good mm -hmm. question, that Victoria. Actually, our best source is our mother. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that we didn't have to do a lot of research because most of our books have a very historical backdrop. But our mother's memories mean more to us when we write than just looking it up in an encyclopedia or on the internet. Um, our books, while they are inspired works, they are works of fiction, which means that they, um, we use a lot of our creativity as well as taking facts from our family heritage. Well, we, uh, we, we can personalize history. Mm -hmm. uh, once you can create a character who is based on somebody you know that has years and years of experience, then you can make it so much more real and so much more meaningful to the reader. It's Thank also you. very important, I just wanted to add, that you know, it's not just our family who has a lot of interesting stories mm -hmm. to share. Every family has something interesting. So mm -hmm. for a lot of these kids who want to write, they should look into their own heritage, their own roots. Thank you, Victoria. We have another call. This is from Jack from Flint Hill. Hi, Jack. What's your question? Jack, are you there? Yes. Hi. From the book Freedom Trip, do you think it was hard for your mother without her mother, and did it give her more push to make it? Was it hard for Do you think mother? it was hard for your, her, your mother mm -hmm. to be without her mother, and mm -hmm. did it push her to make it? Absolutely, and that's why in that book she constantly reminds herself of her mother's parting words, be brave, Sue. Mm -hmm. She says that over and over again on her journey, and that's what carries her. Even at times where she really thought that she couldn't go any further, mm -hmm. she just remembered those words, be brave, Sue. Thank you so much for calling, Jack. Okay, so the last question from Colin Powell Elementary students didn't have anything to do with the book, but it has something to do with your daily life. At the <laughs> beginning of the show, I told our viewers that we would learn something <laughs> unique about you both. So go ahead and share that morsel of information. Well, we happen, not only do we write books together, but we often sell chocolate together because we both own a chocolate store called 
chocolate. Chocolate, chocolate. So good we had to say it <laughs> twice. <Yes. laughs> uh, it's located in downtown Washington, D.C., and we have a lot of fun there. Okay, so <laughs> that leads us to the final question from the students. How many pounds of chocolate do you sell every day? Boy, it, hundreds. <laughs> hundreds. On it's Valentine's Day, the busiest day of the year, mm -hmm. we probably sell thousands. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of chocolate. <laughs> Fun place to be. Yes, I'll bet. Tasty, too. It gives us a lot of energy. Yeah. <laughs> well, not all writers only write books. Some authors have full-time jobs and must fit their writing schedule into their daily routines. We sent our MTA crew to check out Francis and Ginger's store called Chocolate Chocolate in Washington, D.C. Let's take a look. Sweet place to work, ladies. <laughs> Before I ask you further questions about chocolate and, and other things edible, let's uh, take another phone call. This is from Priya at Flint Hill. Hi, Priya. Hi. I was wondering how long did it take you to write your first book? How long did it take you to write that first book? I'm trying to think. That, that actually took us probably about three months, I think, to make it right. And amazingly, some of the stories you hear about how long it takes to get a book published, mm -hmm. um, sometimes it can take up to a year or two years before your submission mm -hmm. or after your submission that a book is accepted. We got a call within three and a half weeks of submitting that work, and a publisher actually wanted the book and we just couldn't believe it because we were expecting to wait at least six months to hear back. And this is for my freedom trip. This is for my book. freedom trip. Yeah. How about that. But it took three months. And after that all these other publishers called us too and they wanted to publish the book. But the problem was is they all wanted us to change the ending. They wanted a happy ending. Mm -hmm. They you know they did not want to see the mother and the child separated. Uh, but we we didn't want to do that. We wanted to show the price that some people have had to pay for freedom, and and it wouldn't have been our mom's story. No, that well, yeah, our mom the wouldn't have talked so to us. So we yeah. we went with our our fir the okay. first offer. Well, we're talking about the writing process and mm -hmm. how quick or long it can take. Mm -hmm. I know that you brought some some manuscripts and other I written did. Well, documents with you. Share them with us, please. Well, a lot of people want to know what a manuscript looks like and this is what we started working on for the have a good day cafe you can see our little scribbles in here and how we changed things and this is just a, a small manuscript well that once, became that became this which has a lot of edit notes right. from your editor if you see yes. these yellow all these post-its the blue and yellow mm -hmm. post-its those are comments from our editor so it goes to show you there's a lot of work involved in a, in a, in a thin book and once we finish that it becomes what they call a mock-up or a dummy and this was so exciting for us mm. because this, this process actually takes sometimes years and if you open it up 
you can actually see pictures or, or you know sketches of what the pictures will look and like. At this stage, can you make changes? We can absolutely. This is, in, this is in when both you the make illustrations changes. and in the words themselves. Yeah. And then this is what, as you can see, the editor has written us a note. This is called the proof, the final proof, before it becomes an unbound book. And this is the final book, mm -hmm. the Have a Good Day Cafe. It's a long but very worthwhile process. It so is. You have to stick with it. We have another call. This is from Ellie. Hi, Ellie. You're from Flint Hill. What is your question today? In your opinion, what could a person do to be a better writer? Well, in mine is to yeah. read every day. Reading is so important. Read anything, everything? Read everything, mm -hmm. yeah. But it, it depends on the type of writer you want to be naturally. Mm -hmm. um, never, lose, never lose sight of your own creativity. That's so important. You have to have a, a very creative mind. Any other I, advice? I couldn't really hear the question. <laughs> <laughs> to be a better writer, what do you need to do? You have to listen to your own thoughts and remember that when you take that pencil in your hand and you put something to paper, that's one of the things in the world that is all you. I mean, you, may f you don't realize how different you are from the person sitting next to you in class or sitting next to you in the bus. But when you, when you draw from yourself and put it down, you will see that's you. That's you. Mm -hmm. Well, we have another call. This is from Alyssa from Bailey's. Hi, Alyssa. Hi. Hi. What is your question? What are you working on now, and who is your favorite author? What are you working on now, and who is your favorite author? Well, what am I working on now? I just completed over the past year a young adult novel and a middle grade mystery. Right now we're actually <laughs> working on a chocolate book together. Everyone right. said, you've written about bagels because mm -hmm. we wrote a bagel story and you know, you've written about Korean food, the Have a Good Day Cafe. What about chocolate? And so Francis and I looked at each other and said, okay, let's stop eating all the chocolate. Let's start <laughs> writing about it. Right. And I just finished a novel for Grown Ups. Um, uh, and I just I started a new one. Uh, we always have different projects going on: kids' books, grown-up books. Um, well, the it interesting makes it thing, fun. Yeah. yeah, a lot of kids ask us, "How many books have you written?" And I love that question because I, I like to say, "How many books have I written, or how many books have I had published?" Yes, I've written about ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I have about seven published. So that's how you know it, it's. But you're a, a good example constantly. of writing about things that you're familiar with and then you like. Um, do we have another caller? Okay. Hi. What is your Alyssa from Flint Hill, I believe. Hi. What is your question today? Um, I was wondering if you kept a writer's notebook for your ideas. Do you keep a writer's notebook? Absolutely. I. Yes, I have so many notebooks and well, her I, office is terrifying yes. to go into. <laughs> papers. I have everywhere. papers stacked as tall <laughs> as me, and I write on post-its. I have hundreds and hundreds of post-its with little notes. Scribble. And I've moved into the 21st century. I actually do everything in a Word document. <laughs> <laughs> do what's comfortable to you. <laughs> Francis it, Ginger Park, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. Thank Thanks you. for having us. It's been great. Our guests today have been authors Francis and Ginger Park. If you would like to learn more about their books, visit their website at www.parksisters.com. To learn more about our upcoming authors and the Fairfax Network, visit us at www.fcps.edu slash Fairfax Network. For the Fairfax Network, I'm Della Kidd. Keep reading, keep writing, and keep dreaming.